Rubens, here we are again. Sao Paulo, your hometown. Tell us a little bit about what the emotions are coming here. I was born in Interlagos. I was born here. My heart is here and I've done my whole career here. It's such a good vibe. When I came in today here and went through the doors and people just, uh, you know, they they do this with with their hand and say, come on, you got to be here, you got to do this. It's such a passion. I feel so, so nice. I remember yourself, your father, your manager, sitting in the Jordan kitchen in Oxford and chatting about how you were going to make it possible to come to Formula One. Have you any memories of that particular moment? Because you were very special. I had a great time at the, the beginning of my career because you, you gave me not just the fact that uh, it was a small team with not a lot of money, but we needed to learn how to survive, but to go fast when it matters and to finish the race when it matters. So I think it was uh, superb. It teach me a lot from, uh, from the long term. There were two outstanding moments for me with you when we were together. Your first ever pole position in Spa. Sensation. 22-year-old Rubens Barrichello rocketed to his and his George Park team's first ever pole position. Yeah, I'm very excited. And also the first podium, which was in Aida, and that was magic. Your first podium, our first podium. Ah, it was magic. I mean, both moments, I remember Aida was such a special moment because if you also remember, we were having a glass of champagne on our little room and Ayrton came just to say congratulations, it was great, it was his, uh, you know, it was his penultimate ever race, if you call it like that, and uh, I was there by myself, I had Geraldo uh, that day, and I opened my door, and the door on the front, uh, on the other room open as well, it was Ayrton, it was Ayrton, I couldn't believe my eyes, and he said, oh, I'm, I'm doing nothing, what are you guys going to do? I said, oh, we're going to Disney, can I join? It was, I mean, I tell you, Ayrton, maybe he didn't have like a cheeseburger, for ages, because that day he ate it like a kid, and I have a memory like that because he must have been a, a man of a, so so strict to, to things. And just on the way to Aida, that happened. It was such a memory. And then with the final podium, it was such a great uh, weekend. Which leads us on to probably your darkest moment, Imola '94. Did you ever, looking back now, seeing the ferocity of your accident, were you surprised how easily you got away with that? Yeah. I remember just the, when I turned it in and I said, oh, the back end went and it was the oops and that's the, the final thing that I, I remember. But um, it called my attention again when I saw the movie because in the big scream, it was such a shunt. Such a shunt. It was such a big, big, big shunt. And um, it was a, a difficult thing altogether on the weekend with Roland and Ayrton because although I lost it in my memory with the shunts and everything, I was, it was vivid. I, I went back to England on that Sunday and uh, like it, I like almost to the whole world, when Senna moved his head, I thought he's alive, that's fine. Now he's fine and for me it was such a shock. Two days later we are here in Brazil with, uh, with a funeral and so on, it was my first ever funeral and um, I was shocked. I've actually tried to tell the Brazilian people, hey, don't worry, I'll be there for you guys. I mean, I'm Brazilian, I love my country and I will try. And people got that as a promise. And then it was a sad thing because it was just it just made it uh, like a pressure. As soon as we changed things, I was on the podium in Canada, and there was a light on the tunnel. There is the Jordan heart of Rubens Barrichello. That's how quick the young Brazilian is going. Of course, we get in Rubens, the ever emotional person, which we love you for, and uh, and we all dropped a little tear when you won your first race. Hockenheim in the Ferrari, come on. It was magic to see my name into the Ferrari car and to be the, the first ever Brazilian driver to be uh, driving for Ferrari was very, 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 very emotional. Did I ever tell you, did I ever tell you that what made me uh, cry again on the podium? Is I've, I've cried my eyes out on that lap and I said, I cried enough, no, it's, it's okay. But when I, when I went into the podium and I look at the sky, I remember my dad uh, selling his Fiat for me to keep on going to actually race on that uh, uh, go-kart championship and for some reason I remember that and I thank the sky for that and then it was such a, it was so pure and uh, you know I was crying now in a way that you know it was such an emotional yes. uh, emotional situation let it all out Rubino feel proud feel proud 2002, 2004, runner-up in the Drivers' Championship, teammate, of course, to the great Michael Schumacher. 
Are you still good friends with Michael? Not anymore. Um, with a, a glass of wine in, in his hands, he can be very, very truthful, and uh, I enjoy our times that we had together. But we don't have uh, that relationship anymore. Has Hungary, where he put you virtually in the wall, has that, that had a harder impact as a result? Um, no, but, I, but but he made he made it like when I saw that I was fighting for a point and you're fighting for that, it's almost like a win. You're, you're going for it. And then I said, who who is the guy who I'm going to fight for? And when I saw that it was Michael, it just made me laugh because he said, I'm going to fight that forever. I was thinking forward and probably that didn't make me feel uh, in danger. I've decided to, to quit Ferrari one, one year before my contract ended because I couldn't hold it anymore. I mean, whenever they, they already told me that it was decided that they wouldn't give me the chance, it was, you know, still Michael, 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 I said, fine, I'm, I'm made of, uh, of iron, but I cannot sustain that anymore. I want to win, so I'm going to try something else. Formula One team looks set to be rebranded in the new season. My phone ring was Ross. He said, are you ready? I said, oh my, it can be very good, it can be very, very bad. And he said, uh, can you be here Friday? I said, I can be there anytime, Ross. Uh, yeah, you have a contract, so we, we want you to drive next year. I went into the house crying, obviously, as, as you know me, uh, with the gratitude of, of that moment and uh, when I told Suvana oh, that was that was one of the best days of my life. Was that a dream team Jensen and you? It was a dream team. Uh, Jensen is one of the uh, the best teammates I ever had but also one of the, the nicest one. Again I remember he was the first one to drive the car and uh, when I asked him he said we're gonna have fun with that and I, I believed him so much. For me it was, uh, it was magical. My memory is Valencia. It's my only recollection of any driver walking up the pit lane after winning a race and each and every team and each and every driver coming out and applauding you. Can you recall that? Oh, very much, yeah. Valencia was the 100th win for, for a Brazilian driver. And to see all the emotion, to see that I had to push with one last pit stop. I mean, even I remember Hamilton coming to me and said, you stood that good. You beat me fair and square today, it was, was really good. So it was a nice feeling. And to see, I, can, I, I, I remember coming into the, to the pit, pit area and everyone, I mean, every one of my old mechanics, everyone from my old engineers, and everyone that just enjoy, enjoy the race, they were there. From the euphoria of that moment, I really must take it up a stage right to where we are. And of course, what looms very large in my memory bank is last weekend, your worst ever qualifying. How low a threshold, how low a point was that for you? I knew it wasn't my fault. I actually came home that day thinking, today I'm gonna have a great race. And that's, that was, that's me nowadays, and that's why I'm so positive thinking. And uh, yeah, it was a number, I was at the back. But in one lap, I was already 18th, and uh, I had a great race. And uh, I think the attitude changes a lot. Our amazing crystal ball. What do you see there in two years' time? Could you stay and bring all your family back to Europe and be a team boss? Um, I don't think so, Eddie. I've, um, my passion is for driving. I, I, I have a sense that uh, whenever I'm a team boss, I'm going to grab that driver out of the car and say, let me have a drive. So it's, uh, it's something that my passion is there, all my knowledge is there. And although I could help a, a team to build and the way that I'm, I do things, even driving, I want to go back to Brazil. I want to come back to Brazil to leave. Your great friend, Massa Felipe, made reference in the, in the press this week that if you get a chance to exit with dignity, your unbelievable record in Formula One, no better place than here in Sao Paulo. Would you accept that? Um, I think Felipe has been very protective. As a friend, I think he wants me, he doesn't want me to actually go in vain and all of a sudden not having said uh, goodbye to my people. The fact is that I will never say goodbye to my people. I'm a, I'm a man of Interlagos, I'm a man of, uh, of Brazil, I'm a man of, uh, of Formula One. I think my middle name needs to change to Rubens F1 Barrichello. I, see, I've, uh, 
I have no intention of saying goodbye to them. If one day he comes and, uh, yeah, maybe I will say goodbye. And, uh, but right now, I'm part of it. I'm so much part of it that I, uh, it's almost like I feel that I, I deserve. Next year, I'm going to be 40 years old. I'm going to be 20 years in Formula One. Uh, I have so much experience, but I have so much motivation. I have so much, uh, so much to go through. It would be, it would be bad not to use my service right now. So I, on that crystal ball, I cannot see in two years' time, but I can see myself here next year.